Hey guys, welcome to the Gear Cave, and I'm here with Joe. Joe, how's it going, man? It's going good, Dave. How are you? I'm doing great. This is a collaboration between Ultimate Survival Tips and the Survival Show podcast, which is killing it. It's been like three weeks, and it is like the last three days, every day has been a record day for us. So thank you guys that are listening. If you're not listening, you should go over there. Uh, over there, we're, we've got some topics. We're talking about active shooters, we're talking about personal self-defense. So we're going to talk about personal firearms today, and we're going to talk about what to look for in a personal firearm. We're going to talk about styles, sizes, weights. We're going to talk about stopping power. We're going to talk about a bunch of stuff. Because everything is a trade-off. It is a trade-off, yep. So before we're all done, Joe and I are going to share with you guys what we personally carry and why. So you ready to get into this, dude? Yeah, let's get into it. Now, the one thing that we did talk about before we started this video up is both Dave and I have been trained and we went through a safety checklist. Each one of us checked these firearms that are on the table right now. Everything that we have laying out in front of us is safe. And you guys need to be careful about safety as well. Uh, very first lesson that you learn from your dad, from your grandpa, or from your hunter safety courses, treat every single firearm like it is loaded. loaded. That's right. You yep. can never get that bullet back. Let's just talk about some important things to consider. And I think the first most important thing to consider is purpose, okay? Mm -hmm. So what do you want a personal firearm for? If you're going to everyday carry it, if you're going to carry it sometimes, depending on where you're going, you're going to put it in a closet or you're going to put it in a night table or something like that. Those, Or maybe you're going to use it for hunting. Maybe it's going to be multi-purpose. You want to kind of hone in on what your specific purpose is going to be, especially if this is your first firearm. Uh, neither Dave or I are made out of money. And we were talking <laughs> about right. before that when we buy a firearm, there is a specific purpose for yeah. it when yeah. we go into it. There's other things to consider. There's balance, there's size, there's weight, there's the caliber or the power, there's carry and comfort. That's gonna, we're gonna be back to that because how you carry it and comfort is very important. I don't know if we'll get to different sheath packages today, but that's gonna be a, a key consideration. Two other things that I would think about too. Are you afraid of it? Mm -hmm. Is it too much gun for you? Right. And are you able to use it mm -hmm. as well? Because some of these are gonna require some hand strength to be able to use. Right, yep. And that gets into skill. So how much skill do you have? Uh, no gun is gonna be too much gun for you if you're comfortable with it, if yep. you're trained with it and you know how to use it. Yep, and that gets to ease of use. Some of these firearms are easier to use than others. And there's one really, really important thing here. And I call this juju. <laughs> <laughs> you were waiting for that. I was. So I just categorized juju it as, do you like it? Like, is it, does it have the right fuel for you? So let's get into some of these personal firearms. Let's start with the big end. The big end, <laughs> okay. So this is a Ruger Red Hawk, 44 Magnum. If you ever saw any of the old school Clint Eastwood movies, <laughs> this is pretty much what he carried. These are, this is the size of the round. I'm gonna say they're 150 to 200 grain. You couldn't get them, get them bigger. I carry this when I go on extended camping mm -hmm. trips. Now this is a revolver. What that basically means is it has a cylinder that spins every time you pull the trigger. This is a six shot. It's very expensive to shoot. I would put this in the category of, this is this is more for me, this is a wilderness gun. There is something too that you trade off with because you're gonna be able to put six in there. Super powerful, super, super accurate. It's gonna go bang every single time that you pull the trigger yes. because of the nature of the revolver. It's not gonna jam on you as right. well. But the trade off is you get six. So that's the first one. What do you got up here? I brought my 45 ACP. <laughs> um, this is a Colt 1911 Korean War vintage, the real deal GI issue. And that's a beautiful fire. I love it. I had inherited this pistol. Um, probably the most expensive piece that I have, either short gun or long gun. It's probably worth something. Man. It is a little bit. It's heavy though. <laughs> I would love to be able to carry that, but it's just so heavy it drags my it, pants down. It's heavy with a purpose though. It was designed with with the military in mind, they're just generally indestructible. One of the downfalls of this particular design is carrying it locked and rocked. Yeah. That hammer is back. Yeah. There is no way to, you can carry one in the chamber with that hammer down, but I wouldn't necessarily 
recommended if you're going to carry this 1911 style, you're going to carry it with that hammer back. Right. And right, that's, right. yeah. So you're into safety here. You're into safety you're when, when that safety. comes. Yes. Yep. And next up, so this is another revolver, and this is the only other revolver that we have on the table. So this Smith & Wesson bodyguard has a very, very comfortable handle. It's only got like a inch and three eighths barrel. And that's good for a gunfight where? <laughs> in an elevator. In an elevator. We used to call these like sand pit guns. This is not a target firearm. It fits five rounds of 38 special plus P. So Which is it, a little hotter than your regular 38 special. Right. And it's a little less power than a 357 Magnum. Who is this personal firearm for? I'm going to say that it is maybe for somebody who's not as familiar or skilled, who hasn't had as much training. It's easy to manipulate. It's it's pretty small. I'm going to call it like a medium sized small. Who else would benefit from a firearm like if this? If you're a beginner, that'd be a great one. I like it because, man, it's got a lot of oomph and all of yeah. those benefits of gross motor skills using it. I would use that. I, that might be something for me, even for a hiking gun. Yeah. It's not going to right, have the right, oomph right. as what that 44 is going to have, but man, that that's pretty good if you're going to that very ultralight too yeah and you can strap that on your belt and completely forget about it yep so this is a smith and wesson bodyguard and I, I would say the downside of it is it does have more width than some of the other small pistols you can kind of see that if you're watching and probably double the width of the next one that we're going to talk about or uh, like the bread and nano and accuracy if you, if you want a target gun, this is not it's the not, gun for not. you. Well, here's the Ruger LCP. And when I went to buy my first personal carry firearm, um, my decision came down between Ruger's LCP or the Taurus TCP. They're both in 380. Uh, my father ended up getting the LCP. I went with the TCP. But this little Ruger is a really nice shooting little pistol. It is very, very, very light. Um, very what light. Is, six plus one? It is, is six plus one. So what's it? So this is a this is what we would call a a pistol. This, it's not a revolver. Mm -mm. And if you want to carry a small uh, pistol and carry it deep, I always say carry it deep. Nobody's going to know if this isn't a sticky holster. I'm such a big guy that nobody ever knows that I'm going to have that on me at all. Of all of these, besides the 22, it has the least power. It's going to be the same diameter as what your 38 plus P is, but you're only going to, you're probably going to have less powder, less than half the powder behind it. Right. You you have iron sights there as well, so you're not going to be able to adjust those. It is not a range gun, and the trigger pull is going to be fairly heavy too as yep. well. There are a couple different thoughts behind this and how you're going to use it. If you're not going to carry one in the chamber. It's sometimes it's like not having a gun at all. That's right. what some people will say. Right. If you're not comfortable with carrying one in the chamber, don't carry one in the chamber, but get comfortable enough so that you probably could so that you can pull that trigger yeah. and it'll go bang when you need it. Let me just show you guys how to carry this. So if you're gonna carry one in the chamber, I prefer to have this in some sort of a holster. Yes, I agree. So this is a holster that actually, it, it covers up that trigger. So again, we're talking gross motor skills. If you pull this out of your pocket and you, you're you pulling it out and you accidentally grab that trigger, that's that's bad. Mm -hmm. That's a bad thing. So you want at least a holster that covers up the trigger and that's, you know, it's an easy, easy, Especially easy if you're going to put gun. it in your purse or in your bag or yeah. something like that. Oh my gosh, be, be safe. You don't just try to rack with one hand. Rack with both. Push and, push pull. and pull. Push and pull. Use your entire arms on that. Yep. And that's going to give you so much more leverage and strength to be able to rack. You'd be able to rack a harder slide that you never could before using both of your arms yep. that way. Yep. And that's a really good point. And I don't want to get too much into technique, but you actually have a little bit more power if you if you learn how to yeah. grab it from the top like that and then push and pull. There you go. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, this was my wife's Christmas present last year. There are some gals out there that they want a black gun just like the guys do. <laughs> Fantastic, wonderful, that you are so cool. My wife's not one of them because she loves pink and I wanted to get her something a little bit different and she loved the white. This is her stormtrooper gun. <laughs> That's what she calls it. This is a Taurus TCP. It's in a 380. It's a six plus one. 
uh, almost I, it's Taurus's answer to the Ruger. The only thing that this does a little bit different than what the Ruger does is that slide will lock back when it's empty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, and you can lock it open, lock it back right there. That's kind of a nice feature. Again, it's just simply iron sights. You are not going to adjust those whatsoever. We did have this out on the range last year, if you remember, and we were planking stuff off at 35 or 40 feet. It was, that. it shot way better than I and thought And you're not a huge Taurus guy either. I am right? not you a Taurus guy. With it. I am not a Taurus guy. But okay, now we're going to talk about the smallest ammo end of the spectrum. And a lot of people wouldn't even consider 22 as a personal firearm. But again, it gets back to, hey, I, I prefer to carry a 9mm, but I found that I don't carry that every day because I don't have the right clothes on, the holster is uncomfortable. Again, it's back to, it's better to have something than nothing. So we got into the conversation about 22s, right? And it is, my wife loves to shoot this particular pistol. Okay. Dave's got one, I've got one. I bought this for her for last Christmas, the same one. And shooting a 22, you can shoot 22 all day long, especially when you get into these smaller guns. Even a 380 in that smaller framed LCP, yeah. Yep. It's going to rock my wife a little bit. This one, man, you can go to the range with this and shoot all day long. You're not going to be afraid right, of that no right. matter what. Because there's not much recoil. There's this is the Walther P22, and it is a larger frame 22 as far as personal safety. Now, this is designed to be a little bit more tactical. Yeah, there's... You know, it's, it's got some style to it. It's got some bells and whistles on it. It's got safeties. It's got a bunch of things that it can do. One's, it could be a range gun. Could be a range gun. Now, one special thing, which I thought was a cool design feature of this particular firearm, is that I think it comes in a three to three and a half inch stock barrel, but they actually make an add-on, which both of our ours, this, this one in particular has, and this adds another two inches to make it a five inch barrel, which is... It, it's, it's pretty good for it's, a little 22 pistol. It's pretty good for a little 22. Now, this now, is... it's not going to shoot like your Browning Buckmark. Right. But, but but this is a larger this is a larger 22. If you were looking for something that was a pocket pistol that you could carry and almost know that it's not there, this is probably not it. But there are a lot of people that I know that that like this for various different reasons. And let me even for like if you're looking for a bug out pistol, this is not right. a bad this is not a bad choice because of all the bells and whistles. But here's the difference. Now uh, imagine 550 of these 44 Magnum rounds, how big and heavy that would be. What we're, what we're looking at now, I just picked up a box of 550 round value pack of 22 long rifles. Now it's not, it's, it's I mean, this is probably six or seven pounds. But it's 550 shots. But shot. it's 550 shots. So that's, that's another upside of, of a 22. Actually, it has adjustable sights on the back. It has, it has a really nice uh, tactile grip to it. It does take a little bit of training to work with it because of the way the hammer works, because of the safeties and the slide release and all of that. But it's a, it's, a nice, it's a nice 22 pistol. Would I select this for my personal firearm that I'm gonna carry, conceal carry? I would not, just because I think there's a lot of better options for the size and weight. Here's something for maybe a beginner. If you're going to purchase a gun, then you want to take to the range and you want to use it and you don't want a chintzy Saturday night special, that would be a good pistol to get into handgunning. Yes. It's going to be cheap to shoot. Right. You're going to have some success shooting it. It's going to be safe to shoot as right. well. Yeah. And like you said, this, it's an easy shooter. It shoots really well. It's accurate. It's good to hone your skills on. And that's a really good point. If you're just starting out in firearms, that 22s are great because you can shoot all day and it doesn't cost you much. It doesn't cost much. There. Yeah. You want to talk about this first 9mm? I would classify this as my personal nightstand gun. I got it for right around $200. It's a Smith & Wesson uh, SW9. It's a double stack 9mm, so I'm going to be able to carry 17 rounds in here. That's good. The one thing I do not like about this Smith & Wesson SW9 is it does have quite a a strong trigger pull, so it's not the greatest gun on the range. That's one of the downfalls for me on that one. But it's what I was able to afford. Right. It, it's rock solid as in usage, mm -hmm. and it's a nine millimeter, which is pretty inexpensive to shoot. So this was a great nine millimeter to get me into it. The next one here is actually quite similar. This is a Ruger 
P95DC. This is my tactical pistol. If you look at this, it's got scratches, it's got dings and all of that. It's single and double action. So this is a this is a very good, very solid firearm. I think the most important thing here is to let you guys know is that quality is very, very, very important in a firearm. Don't just buy something because you can afford it if it's junk. Okay, let's move on and you've got one here. We've got two more nine millimeters left. This is my Smith & Wesson uh, M&P uh, shield in nine millimeter. It also comes in uh, 40. I do really like this. Um, this does have a safety on it as well. Okay. So the trigger pull is quite light and quite short. I also have better uh, glow in the dark sights on that as well. Uh, a single stack. So I'm able to put uh, seven plus one in this one. Mm -hmm. And, or I could put an eight plus one, excuse me, eight plus one in that one. And with that longer, um, it adds some grip there so you can wrap your fin so I can pinky finger around. Yep, get my big hands on that. <laughs> <laughs> so next on the table is my Beretta Nano. Uh, now this is a Beretta Nano with an add-on to it. This has the laser, but the Beretta Nano is approximately seven inches. It has a polymer grip, it's really solid, and then it has obviously a metal slide. It actually has a little trigger safety in here. This is the stock magazine that comes with it. Again, single stack. It only takes six rounds. It shoots really, really well. We, we've shot this a bunch on the range. Hands down, this is, I'm, this is the one I'm, I'm going to. It's comfortable. I can wear this all day in my sticky holster right in the small of my back back here and not even, I just forget it's there until I, it's time to go to bed. So Beretta Nano is my personal choice. What's your personal choice, Joe? Smith & Wesson M&P Shield, okay. nine millimeter. It used to be, and it, it was not the white one, this one's my wife's, but it used <laughs> to be this uh, TCP and 380, okay. but I did move up to this and I feel much more comfortable with the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield. There's so much to cover and we have just skimmed the surface on this. I think the next level is how do you carry these things? There's a lot of different options and we have them up here on the front of the table. What I'm gonna ask you guys to do is if you would like us to go through different various carry options and, and holsters, just let us know in the comments, right? Whether, whether you're on uh, iTunes and you're listening to this podcast or whether you're on YouTube and you're watching this, this video, let us know. If you wanna do that, we'll come back and we'll do another one sometime just specifically on holsters and ways to carry and the different trade-offs that we have there. What do you think? That sounds great to me. Okay, so let us know, guys. I think you guys ought to tell us that we should go to the range and shoot these. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we need to get out on the range more, that's for sure. So I want to encourage you guys, go check out the Survival Show podcast. You're going to find a lot of great stuff over there, including if, if firearms are not your thing, then you need to know how to defend yourself and be situationally aware over at patreon.com forward slash the survival show you can find a couple of videos and podcasts on situational awareness personal self-defense and active shooter what do we do to avoid that prepare and keep ourselves safe that's becoming more and more of an issue these days so check out the podcast and what else i don't know but i'm pretty sure that they should always be prepared because you never know. So be prepared because you never know, guys. Thanks, guys, for watching. <laughs>